LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. The STS is ready for launch. Ignition. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. Go Falcon. Go GPS. Close pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Thirty seconds into flight, propulsion says the Merlin 1B engines are nominal. We're on trajectory and preparing to throttle down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And we're heading into the throttle bucket as we power down the Merlin engines. And throttling back up now. And when the engine's back up at full power. And we have gone past Mach 1. Waiting now for Max Q callout. The vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer reports we're passing through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure called max Q. From here on, as the speed picks up, the atmospheric density decreases and the loads are reduced on the Falcon 9 vehicle. Propulsion power continues to look good. The trajectory looks good. MVAC engine chill started. The engine chill in call out on the MVAC second stage engine indicates we've begun chilling that turbo pump like we did with the first stage engines, getting ready for ignition of the upper stage engine. Now coming up in just over 30 seconds, the usual three sequence event that'll happen in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines. You can see glowing there in the night sky. Stage separation, and then we'll get startup of the second stage engine. Nice view from the ground camera looking up at the nine Merlin 1D and engines on the business end of the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage separation confirmed. And the uh, startup. So we've had a good separation. MVAC up on power. On the left screen, the first stage continuing to coast down range as it begins to deploy those large titanium grid fins. Trajectory continues to look right down the middle. Both stages are following nominal trajectories. Guidance confirms we're on nominal trajectory with both stages. Acquisition of signal, Maryland. Maryland reports they've got signal from the second stage. Next event coming up is payload fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. A nice view from the camera looking forward, the GPS-3 satellite with the two payload fairing halves separating. Everything continuing to go well on this mission, three minutes and 42 seconds into flight. First stage continuing to coast to apogee, headed downrange. Second stage engine at full power, everything's looking good with the MVAC engine. 
Right now, trajectory heading us to where the Bermuda ground station can hear us. We've heard the call out, acquisition of signal. Bermuda now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9 second stage. So four minutes, eight seconds into flight, everything going well on the flight of Falcon 9 with GPS-3. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And at T plus four minutes and 20 seconds, we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns. And we just passed T plus four minutes and 23 seconds, and that's actually when the first stage reaches Apogee of 120 kilometers, almost 400,000 feet. At stage separation, the first stage velocity is about 2,200 meters per second or 5,000 miles per hour. So right after stage separation, the first stage still moving at such a high velocity continues to raise its altitude as it coasts for a couple of minutes. Basically, the first stage almost doubles its altitude from stage separation, which occurred at about 69 kilometers or 226,000 feet to when it reaches Apogee, and then it starts its return back to Earth. And again, Apogee is the highest point or the furthest that it is away from Earth in the trajectory of the first stage. Now, the next, next major milestone that you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see on your screen, is the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight the center E9 engine, and then partway through, we relight the E1 and E5 engines so that we have a total of three M1D L engines helping to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We're just about 40 seconds away from that entry burn beginning. Today's entry burn should last about 27 seconds long. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And you heard that call out that both stages are looking good. T plus six minutes. We're about 20 seconds away from that entry burn on first stage. And it is nighttime over there on the east coast. So hard to see that first stage on the left hand screen. But once entry burn begins, it should light up that screen. We should be able to see first stage pretty well. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that entry burn starting up. Stage FTS is saved. Stage one. You could see the plume started off small and it got a little larger, and that is because we started with one single engine and added a couple engines for a total of three for this entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. And that concludes the entry burn. Next up, we do have a couple major milestones happening back to back. The start of the landing burn for first stage followed immediately afterwards by SECO-1 on second stage. And SECO, which stands for second engine cutoff, is where we shut down the MVAC engine to allow the second stage to coast, which preserves the fuel until we need it for the final burn to take us to our targeted orbit for the GPS-3 satellite. Then about 25 Office seconds. Okay, stage one expected. Then about 25 seconds after SECO-1, we'll hopefully have a nice view of the first stage touching down on Of Course I Still Love You. And there's that drone ship on your left-hand screen. Stage 2 has entered terminal guidance. Stage 1 transonic. Stage 1 transonic. Just about 20 seconds away from those two events. Again, the landing burn, followed by SECO. Seco 1 on second stage, just a couple seconds after that landing burn begins. Stage 2 FTS is saved. Stage 1 landing burn. And Seco. And there we've had Seco waiting for confirmation of good orbit as first stage returns to Earth. Stage one landing leg deploy. Nominal parking orbit. There's good orbit, and at the same time, we have touchdown of our Falcon 9 <laughs> on Of Course I Still Love You. And again, that did, that did happen at the same time, so we did have 
Chico and good orbit of our second stage. Two expected. And there you can see on your left hand screen, first stage landed on Of Course I Still Love You. This marks the 16th Falcon 9 landing just this year and the 64th of all time. And we're looking forward to seeing this booster take its second flight on the next GPS mission next year. Now the second stage vehicle has now entered its first coast phase, which will last about 54 minutes. And we will light that MVAC engine for a second time shortly after T plus one hour and three minutes. So we're going to take a quick break. And as always, we leave you with an animation so that you can keep an eye on where that second stage is throughout the coast phase. So we'll see you back here at T plus one hour and two minutes. Also signal Maryland, expected. Also signal Bermuda, expected. Also signal New Hampshire expected.
Also signal a different end expected. Acquisition of signal Goon Hilly. and a signal at Oak Hanger.
Vessel signal, Gunhilly expected. Also signal, okay, you're expected.
Welcome back to our launch coverage of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission for the U.S. Space Force. If you're just now joining us, we had an on-time launch at 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by a successful ascent, stage separation, first stage came back and landed on Of Course I Still Love You, and two second stage engine burns. We have just one more major milestone coming up to complete today's mission, which of course is the deployment of the GPS-3 satellite from Falcon's, Falcon 9's second stage just about 15 seconds from now. Currently the second stage is rotating to stabilize the GPS-3 satellite, and we're currently in view of those two customer ground stations on the western U.S. that John mentioned earlier that are necessary to connect to prior to deployment today. We've got a nice live view of that GPS-3 satellite. It will deploy confirmed. And there confirms the deployment of the GPS-3 satellite as it's drifting away from Falcon 9 with a nice sunlit view there. This confirms a successful spacecraft separation, and that completes our primary mission, which will bring today's webcast coverage to a close. And it's a great view of the GPS satellite drifting slowly away from the Falcon 9 second stage, and it's a great way to bring a webcast to an end. We'd like to thank the U.S. Space Force for entrusting us with today's GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission. And we look forward to the additional GPS missions we will be supporting in the future. Special thanks this evening to the 45th Space Wing for range support, and to all of our viewers, thanks for joining us for today's mission and have a good weekend.